What's up guys, I'm Claymore and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an awesome D&D map from scratch or even how to improve an existing map. First things first, you need to make a decent canvas size. Now for this I went with a 3300 by 3300 pixel canvas size with a resolution of 300 pixels per square inch. Now this will allow you to zoom in without it getting too pixelated, plus it will be created with a good enough quality for printing. If you're creating your map from scratch, the first thing you need to establish is the coastline. Are you going to go with multiple continents, a regional map, or even just a series of islands? With that in mind, you need to start with your coastline and it needs to look organic. To do this, select a large hard circle brush and block in your major land masses and island clusters. Next, lower your opacity and create a new layer. This is where you're going to put your refined coastline. I used a Photoshop default calligraphy brush to make my lines look more hand-drawn, but you can use whatever brush you like. While you're drawing your refined coastline, do your best to not have any straight or perfectly curved sections, but don't simply make your lines wavy either. Give your coastline some variation by adding inlets, river mouth openings, peninsulas, and other interesting landmarks that you think would fit your map. Also, feel free to cut into and away from your original blocked out landmass. If you already have a map established and you're just looking to stylize it, use the same process we did before, but just skip the first step. Bring in your old map, lower the opacity, make a new layer, and just like before, go through and refine your coastline. Don't get too attached to every line from your old map. Allow new things to develop. Just keep all of your major important landmarks that you had previously made. With your coastline done, now it's time to decorate. On a new layer, loosely redraw your coastline just a bit larger than your original. Doing this will help fill in the empty and boring areas of your map which is with just some extra detail. Try your best to keep the spacing consistent, take your time, and keep your lines clean. Repeat this for both your second and third decorative outline. Now that your outlines are done, we get to add some paper texture. So what you want to do is go online, find two or three paper textures that you like and place them onto your canvas under your outline layers, adjusting their sizes so that they cover the entire area. Playing with the blending options, find ones that look good together. I use multiply and overlay for mine, also adjusting the colors by using the hue and saturation sliders to just take out some of the saturation, because in my opinion that makes it feel more realistic. Once you're happy with your textures, now we can add some water to certain areas of the map. Going onto your base coastline layer, this should be separate from your decorative outline layer. Uh, use the magic wand tool to select all of the areas where you want water, including your lakes and inland seas. Then make a layer underneath all of your paper texture layers and with your water area selected, modify your selection to expand it a few pixels. Then fill that selection with a watercolor of your choice. Next, you'll want to lower the opacity of that layer to about 30% and adjust the hue and saturation to your liking. Using a large soft eraser, fade out the edges of your water to give it a weathered look. The next step is to add landmarks to your map. Starting with mountains, a common mistake that I see a lot is drawing these triangular like spikes and this is something you should try your best to avoid. A better way is to have the tops of the mountains a bit curved, vary the sizes, and do what you can to make it seem as natural as possible.
Right now, the mountains look hollow and empty on their own. An easy way to add interest is to add line shading to the right side of every mountain. This can get tedious, but the final product is well worth it. Now, putting your mountains on your map, uh, they should be on their own layer, and establishing mountain ranges feels much more natural in the way mountains actually exist in the real world, rather than having a single mountain standing alone, which you should only do on rare occasions. Here's how I drew the mountains for this specific map. Uh, just take your time, it's going to be a pretty long process, but you'll get good at it in the end. Creating a river is a simple task. Making a thin wavy line is really the only way there is to make a river. A few things to consider are where does the river start? Maybe it starts in the mountains or it's a natural spring. Also, what direction does the river flow in? Usually I make it to where the river flows to a larger body of water like an ocean or an inland sea or even a large lake. For adding cities, feel free to use any symbol you like, but I have a few standard ones that have served me well in the past, and they can all be created with the same calligraphy brush that the rest of the map has been drawn with. With your symbols chosen, now you get to decide where you want to put your cities, but don't just throw them out there randomly. Think about why people would congregate there. Is it close to water? Was it built as a trade route? Is it in an area with rich resources? Doing this can only help with enriching your map with interesting stories. The next step is to start naming everything. So using your favorite fonts, go through and name all of your landmarks, cities, villages, everything that you want to put a name to. And to make sure that your names look dynamic, try adding text wraps, angling, and even changing up the fonts every now and then will help. Whenever a name intersects something like a river, a road, or an outline, just use the eraser to gently clear the area for the name to sit in. Make sure the name is nice and easy to read. When you get to the point where you want to start adding roads, I always just use a simple dotted line. And in Photoshop, it's very easy to make a dotted line. All you do is you get a small, hard, round brush, go into the brush options panel, adjust the spacing of it until the single line actually breaks up into a line of dots. So now when you draw your road from city to city, it will be a dotted line. Even with your roads in place, we still need to be able to gauge distance between your different landmarks. And the easiest way to do this is to create what I call a distance legend. Uh, it's just a line, it can be decorated with whatever you want, and that line signifies a certain distance on your map. Also, even if you don't have Photoshop or some other really nice art program, you can take the things that you learned from this video 
and apply them to other programs. Like, take this picture for instance. This is a map I did in Microsoft Paint just to prove that it was possible, and it still turned out pretty good. So don't let the fear of, oh no, I need Photoshop to do this stop you. Just go out there and do it. And there you go, the base of your map is done. From here you can continue adding details until your heart is content. Now I can't stress enough how important it is for you to organize your layers and doing that will make it so much easier to go back and edit this as much as you want in the future. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video was somewhat useful to you. Maybe you know, you're gonna go out there and try and draw a map yourself now. But if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, and if you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch me live, then come and join me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash randombearman. You can also follow me on Twitter, at ClaymoreConcept, to chat and get frequent updates. So, I'll see you guys next time.